American media are in a perpetual state of crisis over the words and behavior of the president, but even accounting for that, their reaction to his remarks about Haiti and other undesirable countries was over the top. The president of the United States is racist. Ah. Sir, they're not whole countries. For one, Donald Trump isn't their president. Because we now know that we have in the White House someone who could lead the Ku Klux Klan in the United States of America. Somebody who could be the leader of the neo-Nazi. Our president is a clear and present danger to non-white people in America. <laughs> Gutierrez got unbelievable. Joe Concha writes about media for the Hill, watches TV for a living and joins us tonight. So Joe, I was preparing for yesterday's show, so I missed a lot of this. What were our moral leaders, our ethical betters on cable television telling us last night? Our media overlords, well, for starters, I'm a little banged up today, I, I got to admit, because I was stupid enough to play the S-hole drinking game, which is entailed by if someone says S-hole, uncensored, right, the, the, the whole thing, yeah. you have to do a Boilermaker shot. And oh. by the end of the night... You're in the hospital? Yeah, it was said 36 times. So I actually did 36 Boilermaker shots, which meant I got to see the afterlife, which is glorious, until the EMT <laughs> bought me back. Uh, but that was the thing, right? It was an attention prop that if you're going to use S-hole in a report, quote it once, it's verbatim, I get it, do it. After that, it, it becomes simply a matter of, hey, look at me, I'm being edgy, I'm swearing on the air. And, and on one network alone, it was said 36 times for effect. It's interesting. I mean, look, I can understand why people, you know, are offended by profanity or offended by what the president said. Was there any conversation, though, about what it meant and about the implications for the country and the debate that underlies it about who should come here and who makes the country better and who doesn't? Was there any conversation about that at all that you saw? No, it, it was primarily a matter of am I morally more morally virtuous than you. Yeah. That's what debates come, come down to now. It wasn't like, okay, uh, is this an economic argument that the president is making? Is he sticking up for the American worker or was it a racist statement? And you had one argument uh, over on CNN and it was uh, between Rick Wilson, who's a GOP strategist, like a never Trumper, and then John Fredericks, who uh, hosts a radio show in, in Washington, conservative, right? Uh -huh. And this is what Wilson said, and I'm quoting here. He said, after they go back and forth, and Fredericks is trying to say, look, we gotta bring better people in the country, mainly making your argument. Right. Yeah. Uh, and Wilson's just yelling at him, saying, no, 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 you're a racist. And you might you just go to the Home Depot and put a white hood on your head. He then says this. He says, I would like to gut you like a fish on this show. Gut you like a fish. And that's, well, that's what passes now for debate in this country. It's we got to insult. And, and guess what? He got big headlines. Rick Wilson for saying that. So Media, in other words, you're a bad person. I'm yeah. a good person. But the, I mean, what? So is that the whole point? Was there no attempt to kind of explain what this might be about or the implications for viewers? Or was it or was it all just this moral preening by maybe the single least impressive group of people in the entire country? Cable news people. Is that all it was? <laughs> Which includes us. Uh, yeah. yeah. Look, it, it was it was a panel and it was kind of hard to follow because everybody's yelling at each other. Uh, Don Lemon, give him credit. He stepped in and said, yeah, look, that, that that's enough after the gutting thing. But. Uh, it, it's just very hard to follow, and really, it was a matter of just people yelling past each other. No one wants to exchange any ideas anymore. People just want to bring attention to themselves by being the loudest voice in the room. Boy, it's so unimpressive. <laughs> Joe, Joe, thank you. No, thank, thank you. Thank you for that no. depressing update and for doing the work that we don't want to do and watching that stuff. Thanks Rehydrate, Hug Tucker. That's, that's the whole trick right now. Rehydrate. <laughs> Newly released testimony from the founder of Fusion GPS indicates that company tried to derail the FBI's Clinton investigation. Truly, the author of Clinton Cash is here with details next. Stay tuned.